Hello everyone, uh, good evening. I am really excited to be here. Uh, it's always exciting to be at a fight conference, but uh, it's more exciting, it, it, it is the very first one, and I, am, uh, I feel very honored to be here today as one of the key, uh, keynote speakers of uh, the very first fight on Africa. And I don't take this privilege uh, lightly, so I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to be a keynote speaker. And I would like to thank them for their efforts in putting up such a great and uh, big event. So I am truly honored to be here. Uh, I'm also excited uh, to be here. Just uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a software engineer at uh, Brightco, so I'm truly really grateful to my employer for sponsoring me to be here, as well as for sponsoring uh, the event. Uh, it is always, I've organized like a number of events in uh, Africa, two PyCon Zimbabwe conference in 2016 and 2017, as well as a number of Jungle Girls events, and I know how difficult it is to find uh, sponsors when you're organizing an event. So I don't take it lightly that Bright Code decided to sponsor Pygon Africa as well as uh, send a huge number of uh, attendees. Like I think we are the biggest group coming from one company at this conference. So I'd like to thank my employer for that. I also stand before you uh, wearing many hats. One of them is being uh, the vice president of the Jungle Sophie Foundation. And the other is being uh, the fundraising coordinator for uh, Jungle Girls Foundation. So I thought uh, since I've been involved in the community since uh, 2016 in various roles, there's a lot of uh, experience that I've gathered either as an attendee to an international conference or as an organizer to a local or international conference or by virtue of being uh, a fundraising coordinator for Jungle Girls uh, Foundation or for by being uh, a member of the board of directors for the Jungle Software Foundation. So I decided to combine everything that I've learned during my involvement with the community uh, about diversity and talk about it at this uh, conference, which is why I entitled my talk Diversity in Tech, an African Perspective. So this is my perspective. Okay, uh, so okay. I was saying uh, my involvement in the various capacities gave me like uh, experience that uh, in some instances you are sitting uh, writing to sponsors uh, asking for money in, in another uh, event you are the sponsor you are reviewing requests uh, for conference sponsorship so I decided to share my uh, experience in a, uh, in a talk entitled uh, uh, Diversity in Tech in African Perspective. So if you don't agree with what I'm going to say, it's okay. It's my perspective. It's not yours anyway. But I think <laughs> you can benefit from what I have learned over the years. So I don't stand here saying I am right in what I'm saying. I know we are Africans and sometimes we are very patriotic to our nations and to our continent. So I don't mean to look down upon Africa or anything, but I'm just sharing uh, things that I've learned and that has also helped me and uh, helped shape my career in the Python community. So uh, the overview of my talk, I'm going to give you uh, like uh, the motivation for my talk, why I decided to come up with this topic, as well as uh, give you a full disclosure. Then I'll also talk about diversity, what it is and the interventions that are being done in tech then I'll also uh, talk about your role as an African developer, what you can do to increase diversity in tech. So my motivation uh, comes from the international conference organization and participation that I've gone through. I've, I, I, uh, all in all, this is my 13 year conference uh, conference that I've attended, uh, two of which were uh, 
Python Zimbabwe, I oh, which I organized. Then all other events were either in Africa or they were in Europe or the US. So I also co-organized uh, JangoCon Europe last year. So I also got to be involved in organizing like uh, a European conference, though I was in Africa. So I learned something from that uh, experience organizing a big conference like that. Then the other experience that I'm sharing is uh, my interaction with uh, the Django Girls partners and their diversity efforts. Like one of the partners that I interact with is obviously Bright Code. They are also sponsored in Django Girls Foundation. And uh, I also interact with other partners who also look, who sponsor Django uh, Girls Foundation and they have their motives for doing that. Then the other motivation that I have is my time on the Jungle Software Foundation Board of Directors. And then the other is my own employer's diversity efforts within Brightco, outside uh, the, com the community. Then uh, the other, the major driving also, uh, a force for me in coming up with um, this topic was the unemployment statistics we have in Africa, which is the percentage of uh, people with no jobs I don't know about your country, but where I come from in Zimbabwe, our unemployment rate is over 90%, and most of our youth graduates don't find jobs within Zimbabwe. So we have people who go to the university, they graduate, they can't be hired in their own country. So we, that gives me a passion that if only Africans would know, especially if you are a developer, what a gem you are, irrespective of where you are not having opportunities, you would look for those opportunities elsewhere. Then the other thing that drives also this is that the unemployment statistics in developing countries. So um, when I was doing my master's in strategic management, I learned some, a, a theory in economics which I didn't know existed. So unemployment can be uh, described in terms of people without jobs, but it can also be described in terms of jobs without people. So why do we have people without jobs in Africa? Developed nations have jobs without people. So if we can work together with those nations, we can actually create a synergy where our unemployment, uh, our people who are unemployed can get those jobs which uh, don't have people. So this is uh, one, of, one of the major reasons why I came up with uh, the title for my talk. So I'll give you a full disclosure now. So the aim of my talk uh, it's not ex to explore whether everybody else's in in initiative to increase diversity uh, is good, best, or enough. So I will not look at, uh, I, will not, I will not be judging whether the DSF is doing enough, the PSF is doing enough, the tech community is doing enough, or the employers are doing enough. So my aim is to talk to the, to share up my perspective, and then. Uh, increase diversity to the African developers so that they can do something to increase diversity intake either for yourself or for others around you. So I will not be judging whether what is being done is enough or what, whatsoever. I'm just looking at you as an individual. What can you do about your own situation? So uh, I liked this comment when I was growing up. It's, Alo, Alo, it's a British sitcom, and uh, there was a woman named Michelle. Every time she came, she would say, uh, listen, listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. So, and uh, <laughs> maybe this might be the only opportunity that I'll get to speak to you uh, as a keynote speaker, or maybe the next time that I'll be speaking, I'll be speaking on another subject. So you might need to listen uh, carefully to what I'm saying because I'm only going to say this uh, only one. Okay, so diversity. Uh, if you look at the picture that is there, it shows uh, different kinds of, uh, for those who follow sci-fi, it, it shows uh, different kind of figures, right? They are different, how they look, their stature, uh, even, uh, Everything about them is different. And when we define diversity, it's, uh, the Oxford uh, Dictionary defines this as uncountable or accountable, usually singular, or a range of many people or things that are very different from each other.
So when we are looking at diversity in the workforce, we are trying, we are looking at uh, how many men or women are within an organization, how many like uh, races are within in an organization, or where do they come from, like their locations and stuff like that. They also also uh, defines this as uh, uncountable or the quality of or effect of including a range of many people or things. Like we could look at uh, this conference, how diversity it is in terms of maybe the percentage of uh, female to male developers who are here, or we could look at the diversity from country representation, or we could look at the diversity from like uh, race, or we could look at diversity in terms of uh, the positions that we have. Are you a junior developer, senior developer, or are you in a managerial post? So those are all other uh, ways of looking at diversity. So looking at, uh, normally when people talk of uh, diversity uh, intake, they look at the ratio of women compared to men. And the UNGP uh, studies uh, in 2018 showed that uh, the, of the global workforce, there were only 28% women all over the world. And when they considered sub-Saharan Africa, uh, there were only 30% women. So the percentage is quite low. What are people in tech doing to increase diversity? One of the things that people do is they offer financial aid or opportunity grants for conferences like this. I told you I, this is my 13th conference that I've attended. And this is the first conference that I've attended that I was being sponsored by my employer. All the other ten that I have attended outside Zimbabwe, I, I attended them on uh, financial aid. So if you want to attend JangoCon US, you can attend that conference. Given if only uh, the only condition that you need to meet is you apply for financial aid in time. You can also attend JangoCon Europe on financial aid and you learn what you want to learn. You can also attend like PyCons all over the world. If you just apply for financial aid, I have traveled. I know many people who have also been like uh, Jessica, for example. She has gone to many conferences like me, and we have all been going on those on financial aid. No, I was in Django Con Europe. I attended Django Con Europe this year. He will be attending Django Con US again. So it's one way of uh, conferences ensuring that people from underrepresented communities can attend those conferences and learn and take something back to their community. And it's those are opportunities that we can all uh, take advantage of and uh, use them to advance our careers. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, the other thing that conferences do is they offer speaker mentorship to encourage like uh, first time speakers. So if you want to give a talk at, Pico, at any PyCon, there will be like uh, people who can mentor you. How can you, how do you draft your proposal? How do you, uh, how do you come up with your slides? And you can take, uh, take advantage of those uh, uh, not take advantage, but you can make use of the availability of those mentors to uh, submit a proposal and also take part in a conference. Then there are also people uh, called uh, like diversity advocates. These people are put in like conference organizations or they are hired by organizations simply to uh, be diversity advocates. When, what they do is they identify uh, talents or speakers who come from underrepresented, uh, underrepresented communities to be either part of a community or to join their company. Then the Python community itself has got uh, many organizations who are doing a lot to increase diversity. The Python Software Foundation, the, uh, the Django Software Foundation, Django Girls and PyLadies, these are all organizations uh, which promotes diversity in many ways. Uh, for Django Software Foundation to support a conference, they need to know what you are going to do to make sure that you, your conference is accessible to, under, to populations from uh, underrepresented populations. So you need to show them, we are going to reach out to them, we we'll offer financial aid, then they can support your conference. And that, uh, we have a diversity, a diversity statement on the Django Software Foundation website. Django Girls is an organization uh, that empowers women to organize a uh, free one-day workshop to introduce women to programming. And then Pilot is, is a mentorship uh, 
group for ladies who called with Python, which exists to help them uh, grow in their, in their programming journey. Uh, Mainly was talking about Pi Ladies Berlin, and it's a chapter of Pi Ladies. So already in the community itself, there are already many initiatives that are being done to increase diversity in tech. Then the tech community, uh, this refers to everyone who is gathered here. You are part of a tech community. There's a tech community on Twitter or on LinkedIn, and some of them, they refer like good developers or friends. If you post on Twitter that I'm looking for, for a job, and you have people, they can actually magnify your tweet and retweet and uh, tell people that you are looking. Then there are people who actually market uh, job opportunities to their friends and networks. I learned about Brightco from Daniel, uh, <laughs> because we already knew each other on Twitter. So this is the tech community that uh, actually people are advocating. Daniel is advocating for diversity in Brightco. He reached out to me to, to find developers in Zimbabwe and in other parts of the world. So, and he also tweeted, uh, I, I was talking to... I was talking to someone in Pride, I'm not sure if it's Michael or um, it, it's Mila, who responded to a tweet from Daniel that we are hiring. Oh, it's Michael, right? Yes. <laughs> so it, 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 you, you, you can find a job on Twitter if you are networked on, uh, with, 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 you are involved in a tech community. And then uh, I, there are also like people who spread good words about speakers or developers from minority communities. There are people who can just say, I'm coming up with a list of good speakers from Africa. Do you know anyone? And people start posting names, and from there you can actually be invited to speak at a conference and stuff like that. So there's a lot of uh, things going on within the tech community to increase diversity. Then there are tech companies who sponsor events or non-profits. Uh, as you can see, uh, Pi, uh, Python Africa is possible because of, of the sponsors that we have. Uh, Jungle Girls is running because it's being run by, it's, uh, from money that comes from companies who are sponsoring a non-profit like Jungle Girls. Then, uh, there are tech companies sometimes they hire like diversity or developer advocates or talent acquisition managers. And their role is to find like talent from all, uh, diverse uh, pool. Then there are people who are also like uh, headhunting uh, talent via social media, such as LinkedIn. I personally have been approached by many companies through LinkedIn. So this is what is happening uh, within the tech community and being done by tech companies. I thought I should just share like diversity figures uh, in Brightco. We are not happy about our figures, but at least we are doing something to increase like uh, diversity within the company. So Brightco has many employees, uh, but uh, the most, uh, the one thing, the fun fact for me is that it has like uh, employees from 29, can 29 countries in five continents. And the only continent we have been hired from so far is Australia. And then uh, in Africa, we have uh, employees from Cameroon, Egypt, Kenya, uh, Nigeria, South Africa, Uganda, Uganda and Zimbabwe. Then 33% of our staff are women, 43% of our leadership uh, staff are women, 68% of non-tech roles are taken by women, and then only 23% of our tech roles uh, are filled by women. So this is an area that we need to improve on. And if you are a woman uh, you, and want to help us increase our diversity figures, Brightco is hiring, probably you can... <laughs> Help us uh, meet our target. <laughs> then there are local uh, Python communities. Uh, many African countries now have active Python communities and events, uh, like Jungle Girls, Pilot Meetups, and uh, Python ETC. Uh, when we started organizing Python Zimbabwe with Humphrey, our, main, uh, our major focus was to provide visibility for Python developers because there were no jobs for us in Zimbabwe. And uh, that was our, our main goal, and I am happy that today most of the developers that I know that we started with when we were organizing Python Zimbabwe are now remote workers. And uh, if you saw the team that introduced themselves here, 
one way or the other, every developer who is here, they are waiting for some remote company. We might not have yet anything directly to do with their being hired, but the, the, we are happy to say that our goal was made to provide employment uh, for our community through introducing them to the global community. So what can an African developer do to increase uh, diversity in tech? I've already spoken of what others are doing. Uh, everybody else around us, they are making an effort to include Africa uh, in, the, uh, in tech, but what are we doing as an individual? In case you're wondering, who do I mean when I say an African developer? I just mean uh, everyone who is here. If you know anyone who is coding, you're an African developer. This photo is uh, of Django Girls uh, Kumasi from, uh, from here in Ghana. So anyone who is here, you're an African developer, and you can do something about your, about your diversity in tech in general. So ideally, what should happen is uh, local meetups like Twilight, Django Girls, should be helping us like uh, get uh, improve our skills. We could join like mailing lists uh, in the local and international space. Uh, I will talk about mailing lists that are there that you can join. Conferences like this can also like help us uh, improve our skills. We can also be developing your own skills, uh, learning at your own time, and then ultimately you become a software engineer. So this is ideal, right? And ideally, we should all be working for our local companies or be in the, in the entrepreneurs in our own country. That's an ideal situation. But if you are coming from uh, my background, that might not be possible. Because it's not easy to become an entrepreneur if you don't have money, let's be honest. And it's difficult for you to talk of establishing your own company if, you're gonna, if you're, you cannot pay transport for you to get into town. So why if you want to be working for our own uh, companies or working for local companies in our own countries, probably it might not be possible. So what should we do? Uh, in 2016, uh, Jungle Girls produced a report, an impact report in which they measured the impact that they, uh, Jungle Girls had been doing since its inception in 26, in 2014, and the interesting figures are of, uh, uh, on the survey that was done of 600 women was that 21% of participants were now working in tech, and 79% of the women that participated in this survey were still learning to code after attending uh, a single jungle girls workshop. So if we as, uh, Python, as Python communities in Africa could be able like, to measure the impact that we are making year after year to see after maybe organizing five jungle girls uh, workshops, after mentoring women, uh, women uh, or any other developer in pilot, uh, pilot, through pilots, how many of, of those developers are actually getting to be employed? This would be a great thing. Because it should not be just about getting sponsorship money from organizations to have uh, a flamboyant event, and then at the end of the day, no developers are being changed out from the community. At the end of what, what will end up uh, be happening is that we might be find it difficult to find sponsors for our events here in Africa if we are not going to target producing developers that can actually be hired. Meaning to say, our ult ultimate goal as a community, uh, even as individuals, is where after attending uh, a PyCon, getting exposed to all, everything that you are, all the talks that you are going through, your, your goal should be to become a software developer or to take up maybe a related role in tech so that we increase diversity in tech. This is, should not be uh, just a meet up where we come, we meet, we talk, uh, we eat. In Zimbabwe, if you organize an event and there is no food, it discourages people from coming. And <laughs> You have like a lot and out. And my, my, it's, it's my desire and my wish if we could like take it seriously this event and develop our skills so that by the end, uh, in five years, the number of the developers would have increased. And some of the stories would be saying, I first learned to code at PyCon Africa in a Jungle Girls workshop. 
or I attended a beginner's day and I was introducing, I was introduced to God at Pycon Africa and I've been learning through the local communities uh, mentoring me, now I'm working as a developer. Jungle Girls has done that. Of course, the women are, are coming from different backgrounds, but it's possible for a fraction of the people that we introduced to programming to actually end up, learn, up learn, uh, working in tech. And that should be our ultimate goal. So, in case you think that uh, I'm just saying uh, this because now I'm working for Brightcore and things are good for me, uh, I, I decided to do a Scott matrix uh, for an African developer because six months ago I was working for Brightcore, so I was basically facing the same challenges that you are facing. So, if you are in Africa, what strength do we have uh, as Africa? One thing that we have as Africa is that we are growing uh, a growing population. Uh, the moment we get married, we, it's, it's like it's automatic that we have children, right? We reproduce. Maybe the number of children may be different. You might say we have one or two, uh, but it's different from developed nations. People can get married and decide that we are not going to have any children, and we are not going to adopt either. And they make that decision. And Africa is a growing population. Uh, the person, uh, the morning keynote speaker said we are a growing population and I, I, I like that because it's reiterating the strength that I thought we have. We are a growing population and it's a strength in that we have human resources available. And if you check in the morning when people were asked to raise their hands, most of us are below 35. So we have a population that can be hired. So we have the human resources here in Africa. And most of us are educated and we have skills. We have either, a, the way we are raised is that you, you, are, you go through a primary school, high school, you go to university, you get a degree, and then you look for work. So we already have those degrees. And I am sure we have like computer science, computer science students uh, in this conference from the University of Ghana. Because that's how uh, we are raised. And the other thing is we are naturally hardworking. Our difficult environments uh, force us to be hard workers, whether it's manual or just being focused on your work, because you know I have uh, a need that I need to meet. If I don't work hard uh, and fail my, uh, my studies, my parents can't afford to send me back to school. And if you notice, most of us don't have the option to quit when we are sent through university. Why? Because we, we don't have the resources to beg that kind of attitude. So naturally we are hard workers, and it's a strength. Then the other thing is uh, we are good at hustling, you know, uh, trying to make ends meet. That's something that we can do. And it's a strength that makes us uh, good workers if we get the opportunity to work. But what are our weaknesses? One of our weaknesses is uh, lack of, lack, lack of uh, exposure. Normally we are defined by what we see because we, we grow up... Uh, we go to, through primary school education, high school, and university, and what we see can actually define us. If you are in Zimbabwe, the current situation is after people uh, graduate, there are no jobs, so everybody is selling something. Either you are, if you go in Zimbabwe right now, and in the street, somebody will be selling, the high chance is that somebody is selling a time or Selling a car charger is a degreed person. There's a high chance that the driver who's driving uh, a combi or a taxi is a degreed person. Why? Because things are difficult. Uh, uh, and because we are... Because we lack exposure, we are, we are then just uh, limited by what we see. And we are then defined by our circumstances. We also have uh, things that uh, threaten us also, and one of them is poverty. It's my, like uh, Jessica was say, uh, saying that when they were running their first events uh, of the, over the past few years, they have been funding those events. So what it means, they cannot uh, uh, give financial assistance for people to attend like local meetups. So somebody might not attend a local meetup, not because they don't want to, but because they can't afford to. Then the other challenge may, depending on where you are, it might be internet connectivity. Uh, internet may not be stable, or if you are coming from Zimbabwe, power out, and probably, I think I went to Nigeria last year, they had the same uh, issue we had of uh, power outages. 
<laughs> yes, it's Zimbabwe, yes, that's true. It's not just true. It happens. Anyway, but all, despite all that, there are also opportunities that are facing us. And one of them uh, is uh, we can make use of global networks, uh, like I already said, or, and there are global opportunities. While we don't have jobs in our own countries, there are kind of companies which are hiring because they have jobs, but no people who can take up those jobs in their country. They, oh, there are also like local op entrepreneurship opportunities. If you can come up with your ideas, most of the things that have been solved, we have many problems in Africa which we can actually address using tech. And it's up to you to choose uh, the route that you are going to take. But uh, despite all this, you can still build your own bridges. What do I mean by building bridges, building your own bridges? Uh, the first thing that you can do is conference participation, and most of us are, are already doing that by being here. Or you can volunteer in an open source project or a foundation. Uh, I started volunteering on the GSF, uh, okay, I was added to the GSF membership first. Then I volunteered on the GSF Code of Conduct before I got onto the Board of Directors. And uh, that has really helped me like, make more uh, connections and meet more people. And I have traveled in, uh, on behalf of the GSF and it has helped me boost my career. Or you can, uh, you can also build your bridges by developing your coding skills. The other thing that you can do is uh, build an online profile. Uh, via, oh, you can do the profile on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter and Facebook. You have a personal website or a blog or a GitHub, uh, a GitHub profile. All these are necessary if you are going to be applying for a remote job for a company that is not, not in your own country because they are going to use your profile to vet you to actually see whether you are a developer or not. Do you have any contributions on GitHub or uh, you are just saying you code when you do not code at all? So having an online presence will actually help you build your own bridge. Then the other thing that you can do is you can uh, join mailing lists. We have a Python, uh, a Python Africa mailing list uh, through the PSF which you can join. Then if you are a Django Girls organizer, you can, you can join the mailing list as well. Uh, every now and then there are jobs that are posted to the Jungle Girls community. If you, uh, you can also be a PSF member. Uh, if you check the PSF uh, website, there is, is information on how you can become a member. You can also join a uh, Jungle mailing list if you check the website. And then if you can also join uh, the GSF membership. Uh, you can either nominate yourself or nominate someone to join the, uh, the GSF membership. And if you are accepted, you, be, uh, you can also get uh, information on opportunities within the Django community. And you also get to contribute to the Django uh, project. But when you nominate yourself or no nominate somebody, you know, you need to have to, you have to say something that you think... Uh, qualifies them to become a member because GSF membership is, uh, is something which comes uh, by your contribution uh, to the Django community either through code or through advancing the uh, uh, through advancing the use of Django in the community. So you need to kind of put uh, a motivation for why you think you should join the mailing list or why that person should join. Then after building your profile, you can then decide on whether do you want remote work or relocation. For me, relocation is complex. I don't want to deal with uh, the visa and the work permit process. But if you are willing to do that, then you, you can also apply for jobs that have relocation. For, uh, remote is much easier because it only requires the contact between you and the organization. And setting up your remote office wherever, you can work from home, or you can rent an office, it's entirely up to you. Then applying. Uh, you can apply by responding to online job postings. Uh, 
which, which can be sent either via Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or can be sent via mailing list. And if you see a job posting, please respond to recruiters or talent acquisition managers if they approach you. You can also respond to postings by friends or network. Then if uh, a job is sent on the mailing list, please do not respond to the person who sent it, especially if they gave you uh, an email address where to respond to. And if you are not ready to interview yet, you can please don't respond. Uh, build on your skills, and then when you are ready to respond, you respond to them. Uh, to the uh, to the interview. Then interviewing. Uh, the interview varies. Uh, process varies within uh, with with the company that you are applying to. But you should be prepared for a phone or a, uh, phone interview or a video call, uh, which can be before or after. Uh, the coding question. So anything can happen. And then uh, some companies may ask you technical questions during uh, the phone industry. So you need to prepare uh, rigorously for your industry, depending on the job that you are applying for. Then uh, in the coding industry, do your best to complete all uh, the uh, coding tasks and ensure that you meet all requirements. Then, if you are lucky to get uh, a project that you have to submit your own time, it is less stressful than whiteboard coding industries over the phone. So, if you can uh, get an employer who, if the, who says you can do the project and then submit it your own time, those are better to tackle than the ones that you have to tackle immediately on the phone. If you are then, if you suppose you interview and you are not successful, uh, do not despair. Just continue working on your coding schools and uh, continue building your bridges. Continue applying for other positions. And even if you fail uh, an interview with an employer, uh, you can try again after six months or after a year when you feel you have improved your skills. Or if it's a uh, if it's a coding uh, project like uh, Bright, I was talking to other engineers, uh, okay, they can actually allow you to, they give you feedback, and if you can fix your, uh, your errors and uh, respond to their feedback, you, still, you can still reapply. So it depends on the company that is uh, hiring you. Then if you are successful, negotiate and accept uh, the offer, then you work out the required paperwork and then you need to also like figure out your working environment because it's critical for your success. So if you are coming from a country that is poor, that's like me, you need to find how you are going to circumvent that. Uh, you need to figure out like your working hours. What time are you going to work? Uh, for, for us in Brightco, there's a certain time that we have to be like online. Uh, at a time zone, uh, we are just... <laughs> Depending on your client, or you might need to be online between uh, 7 and 11 p.m. for some teams, uh, my time. And some people who may find them being uh, online maybe after 12 midnight. It's something that you'll have to figure out and if, you, if you are built for it. So you need to figure out your working environment. Nobody will figure out that for you. Then uh, when you start working remotely, one of the things that you need to be prepared for is to being open uh, to diversity. You need to accept your colleagues because we are coming from different backgrounds. Right for has 29 uh, people from 29 countries. We have different religious backgrounds. We have different uh, social backgrounds. And uh, the way we see things are different. So it doesn't necessarily mean that my perspective is right or that the other person is wrong. And we need to be able to accommodate each other. And you also need to be like uh, very flexible, to be flexible, and sometimes very flexible, so that you can be able to fit in a team. I've already mentioned the time, uh, the time differences that you have to care for, and uh, it requires somebody who is flexible. And you also need to be able to flexibility means that you can also be corrected when you are wrong and talk uh, and take uh, criticism uh, in a positive manner instead of shouting the person who has reviewed your work. Somebody reviewing your work and saying you need to polish up doesn't mean that they don't like you. 
It's just the fact that you need to correct something before that it, it, before your work can be accepted. So you need to be very, very flexible when it comes to that. And then you need to find uh, ways to overcome uh, your barriers. Like I already said, uh, there are certain barriers that we have. Like one of the things that I I see that most of us okay I struggle with it. And I was talking to other people who were telling most people don't think they are smart enough or are not confident. I, I realized that most people, most times I wonder why people respect me so much because I don't see the achievements that they think I have made in the way that I have made. So I, sometimes I wonder if it's humility or it, it's actually a self-esteem issue. It is something that you have to like get over with. Because people actually are applauding you and you doubt, do they really mean it? Are they genuine or, you know? It is something that sometimes people actually mean, mean it when they say good things about you. And it's something that you like you need to get uh, to adjust to when you work with uh, other people. Then uh, my personal experience with remote working, I started working uh, remotely for Django Girls Foundation and I found that I, I love the flexibility that comes with remote working. Uh, I choose uh, the hours that I want to work and then I communicate with my team and uh, I realize also it requires a balance between work and family, and that, that is my responsibility. So I need to plan uh, my, my day in such a way that I still have like, a social life after working. But it removes also the need to, commun to commute to the office. Uh, I, love, uh, I love that bit, especially in Zimbabwe, we're in winter. So, uh, during the coldest days, people would complain that it's very cold going in the mornings and in the evenings. I didn't feel that because I work from home. I have a heater, so I like that. I, I, I just like the need for not having to pay transport money to get to work. And I don't need to get into an office. Um, and I don't need to dress up, you know, for the office because I'm already in the office. So I can dress as I want. I just have to make sure that when I have a video call during the stand-up meetings, the part people see is that well dressed. So I like, I love that flexibility. Then I also love that uh, it pays well. Uh, actually, it's the most paying job that I've had since I graduated in 2009, and uh, I celebrated my 10th year of uh, working experience this year. And right now, it's uh, the most paying job that I've had. And uh, They are paying me in a global, uh, using global rates, while I'm living in Zimbabwe, which is a weaker currency, and uh, that is an advantage. So my man actually buys more than somebody who's living in the U.S., and I appreciate that. And then, uh, when you are working remotely like I am doing now, the one thing that you need to be sure of is that you don't burn your bridges. What do I mean by that? When I, uh, I got hired in by Brightco in December 2018 to start in January 2019, I had given a Jungle Girls Foundation notice that I, would, I think I, would, I, I thought I would be leaving them somewhere around April, May, uh, as their fundraising coordinator. But I got hired before that. So uh, Ola, Ola Sendeska was very instrumental in me joining Brightco because she recommended Brightco over the other company that I was interviewing with. And uh, I considered them both all as uh, my friends, and I couldn't just like walk out on them. So what I did in preserving my, uh, my bridges with them was, instead of saying, because, uh, okay, I was working for you part-time, 40 hours per month, now I have a full-time job, I no longer need you, find what you can do with your fundraising. I decided to stay on as a volunteer. The other thing that I did uh, when I was, uh, before I joined Jungle Girls Foundation, I was volunteering with the GSF. And when I got hired by Jungle Girls Foundation, I didn't leave my position in the GSF because now I got a paying job. You might take this slightly, but I wasn't like this like five years ago uh, or ten years ago when I started working. Uh, I worked for several companies. And in 2014, uh, 2015, after I finished my master's, and I was thinking, well, which company can I join? What can I do with my career? I found that none of the companies that I worked for between 2009 
in 2013, I, I was prepared to go to them. Uh, one of the reasons was I knew that they would reject me because I was one person who had a flight risk before. If I get bored, I get another job and I probably give you three days notice I did. And most tech people do that. Uh, I, I did that with uh, most of the jobs that I went for. Uh, if I resign, maybe I uh, give you one, one week's notice or I will resign after I've already started another job. So it's, but doing that is uh, immature. You are burning your bridges. You will need them uh, later, in, during the, uh, later in life. And if you are working in the uh, global community, you don't want to burn your bridges because uh, there is Twitter. You can just be trashed on Twitter and nobody wants to hire you. So you need to be very careful about uh, your bridges when you start working and things are working uh, well for you. Then uh, in conclusion, if this is my perspective. I, I feel Africans are equally responsible for increasing diversity figures in tech by making sure that they are not underrepresented in the tech space. Be the next diversity attendee, speaker, or hire. Whether it's a conference, you can be the next diversity attendee or speaker. Uh, people accept uh, you know, your talk not because it's bad, but they are willing to uh, accept, they accept your talk because they want to have an African speaker at that conference. And they are willing to pay those expenses for you to come to that, uh, that conference. It's a, it's a good thing. You make sure you work together with uh, the conference organizers. One, one of the things that I realized when we were organizing Django Con Europe 2018 was there's always the complaint that uh, there are few, few African speakers at Django Con US and Django Con Europe. But it's not necessarily the fault of the organizers. But so sometimes when you are looking for 30 speakers and you have 115 uh, proposals and probably six of them are from Africa and Asia, you cannot really uh, 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 expect to find five speakers from Africa and five speakers from Asia when the, when the submissions are also low. So we need to work together with those who are organizing conference and submit proposals we need to like um, work together with companies that are willing to increase their diversity and become the next diversity high. And then, uh, before I end my talk, I thought you should know that uh, Brightco is hiring. Uh, our motto is research and hire globally. So we don't care where you are from. We are hiring. If you are looking for your next remote job, consider Brightco. I, I think we won't have uh, time for questions, but if yes, we have time for questions. Uh, hello. Okay. Uh, so I think we actually are going to have time for one or two very short questions, not comments, questions. Um, does anyone have a question? Very short. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hello. Yep, it's on. Uh, thanks for the amazing um, uh, keynote. Uh, the question that I wanted to ask is, you know programming is hard, right? And <laughs> working from home... Uh, Ron, could you, you speak like up a little bit? Hello. Okay. I was saying uh, programming is very hard, right? And working from home, does that uh, not affect your uh, environment? Like, doesn't sometimes working from home feel, feel it, it end up not feeling like you are, you are home anymore because of that tense environment? I don't know if you get what I'm asking. Okay, uh, I think I do, but uh, okay, working for Brightco for working from home, uh, the one thing that uh, Brightco emphasizes is that you should have a life outside uh, Brightco. So many African developers uh, have actually been like uh, reprimanded for working more than 50 hours. Uh, because Brightco emphasizes that you should work like 40 hours. So if you toggle 40 hours, 
uh, for that week. I think uh, it removes that uh, feeling that we have, like working from home can give tension because it's a matter of finding a space that you call your office, you work when you are done with your eight hours per day, you move out of that office and you go to other rooms. Uh, one question here yeah, from your employer. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, can you hear me? Okay, good. So, I, I ask this of Anna every once in a while, um, but I'll ask it again publicly. What can we do to increase our diversity numbers at Bright Core? I mean, we're trying to hit the check boxes, but I just feel like there's something else we can do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, wow, that's a difficult part. Yes. Okay. I okay. I I feel uh, we need to probably uh, reach out more or probably publish a diversity statement that we are working towards uh, increasing diversity in right core. Uh, we are looking to hire, uh, if, uh, we list the populations that we feel underrepresented, like in our instance, uh, we, we want to hire more women. I think that public statement will actually uh, encourage more people to join our team. <laughs>